here with UTEP coach Scotty Walden. Coach, welcome uh, to the show. Thanks for making your debut on the Republic of Football Network. We asked the same thing to Willie Fritz last week. Have you been able to take a day off since you <laughs> took over the job? And when you do get a day off, what does Scotty Walden do to, to unwind and kind of take a step back? Well, I don't even know how to spell the word off, man. What what is a day off? I'm not sure what that is. My 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 head is still spinning, man. And you can I apologize for my voice on the show. My I've I've been been yelling and screaming quite a bit, and so we're uh we're we're trying to get things changed out here. So we, we've been working a lot, but uh when I do get a day off, um you know I'm I'm spending. We just had a uh, our newborn child uh, named, named Maverick. He was born right over here, uh you know right across from the stadium basically, and uh, he's uh, going on. Let's see. He'll be a month old this Saturday, so it's uh, it's coming up on a month. So um, if I do get a day off, I, I've been assisting Mama in any way possible, any way possible, whatever whatever she needs, I'm I'm there. But uh, you know, we we just we just closed on a house, um, so we we moved in, and you know, we're getting all our boxes unpacked, and you know, so I'm 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 busy trying to trying to unpack that stuff and 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 take care of little, little man. So it's uh it's, it's it's definitely been a whirlwind, but been a lot of fun. And coach, we know you're a huge Dallas Mavericks fan. And you said your first son, Luca, was not named after Luca Doncic because your wife didn't know Luca Doncic. So yep. what's the spin zone about Maverick not being named after the Dallas Mavericks? This is <laughs> now here's here's the deal. I'll say this. All right. This is how you know you married right. That's all I'm gonna say. Cause she named both our kids and I'm not arguing if she wants to name my son Luca and Maverick. I'm not gonna argue that. I was like, <laughs> That's awesome. She, 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 she fell in love with that name and, and she's big on meaning. Kind of like we talked about with Luca, like, you know, uh, Luca stands for bringer of light. And she was like, yeah, that's, that's his name. And I'm like, you know, like I told you, I was like, man, like, you know, people are going to think I named him after Luca Doncic. And she's like, who is that? I don't know who that is. Uh, Maverick, however, was like, like Scotty, like I, I, I like Maverick, I'm stuck on Maverick. I can't get off. And I'm like, why? And she's like, well, it, it means trendsetter, you know, somebody who's unique, cutting edge, a leader. She's like, I, I just, I, that's what I feel like. I feel like he is. And I'm like, no arguments for me. I'm good. If you said my son's name is going to be Luca and Maverick, I'm cool. So, you know, now deep down, am I happy that it's, that maybe it kind of pertains to Luca and the Dallas Mavs? Maybe. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a little happy about that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, when your name was, was first kind of as a circle around the, the UTEP job, I started reaching out to, to all the coaches I know, kind of get a scouting report on, on Scotty Walton. And the, the number one phrase, like we were doing one of those boards where you, we put up the, the names of, of the, Energy was one, right? That was, that was number one on the list. Energy describes Scotty Wald. Where does that come from? And when do you kind of remember that being a, a big part of your personality? Man, I, I just, I just think, Mike, I think, I think the energy comes from just like be, people. I say this, man, people, when they first meet me or their first, you know, on a recruiting visit and stuff that we do something, our recruiting visit, I've kind of picked this up. Uh, when, when kids come on official visits, we'll, we'll, we'll exit the room and we'll let the parents, and the players, uh, the visitors stay in a room and we'll bring in our players and we call it a player panel and, and all the coaches leave the room and we let them ask whatever. Like, just, hey, have at it. We got nothing to hide. Ask them whatever you want to ask them. And uh, I, I I polled them one time. I said, what do they ask you guys? Like, I don't want to, you don't got to tell me like what, what you guys say. But like, what do they ask you guys? And they're like, coach, you know, the number one question we get is, is, is this dude for real? Like, is this, is this, is this how we is all the time? And I was like, and, and of course they all say, yeah, I mean, this is, this is just who I am, you know? And I, so I think like, at first, I think people think it's fake or like, oh, this guy's just putting on a whatever. But like, I, trust me, my wife would tell you, oh, I wish he, I wish he could change, but uh, you know, I can't change. I am who I am. But um, no, I think Mike, to answer your question though, I think that that energy and that passion, you know, I, you know, some people may say energy, I say passion um, a lot because, you know, I think when, when you are living out what, what you feel is God's calling on your life, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a man of faith. And, you know, like, I just think like when you are in alignment with what, what, you know, God has called you to, to do and, and his purpose, you know, for your life and, and you're living that out. I, th I think that natural passion and energy is just there with it, you know, and, and um, obviously personality wise, that's who I am. But I also like, I, you know, I, there's not a day I wake up where I feel like I have a job, you know, I, I mean, I literally guys, like I look out of this sun bowl, I'm looking out here, which by the way, they're, 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 they got dirt all over my field right now. They're they're setting up for monster trucks. It's crowded. I've never seen nothing like it. it's crazy. I'll show you guys. Please. Well, I, I I got the I got the real sun bowl in the background. Sorry, I know I got the background on, but it's crazy. But bottom line is 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 I don't feel like I come here and and you know 
I'm working a job. I, it's surreal to me still that that I'm an FBS coach in in the in the in the state of Texas. Um, and bottom line, getting to coach football in general, be around kids every day. It truly is a passion of mine. Uh, so I think my personality combined with, you know, following God's God's calling on my life. Um, I just feel like I feel like that that kind of naturally um, uh, comes out. And coach, you said you're called to coaching. Coaching is a calling. And the person who you said had the biggest impact on you was Phil Young at Cleaver in high school when you moved there as a junior. What was your relationship like with him and how did he get you to become called to coaching? Man, it was, and you're you're exactly right. Co coaching is a calling, man. It's not a nine to five. And and when I met Phil Young, I mean, I knew right then and there, like you know, this is what I want to do because I, I the way he operated, right? Like he was he was a hardcore ball guy. Like he knew football. He taught me the spread. It was my first time being in the spread offense too, so I was I was pretty pumped about that. I I had grown up in Hearst and uh, went to LD Bell High School, and and you know we ran the wing tee, which I love that offense too. Running the option was fun. But I never, I never in my life been in the gun and 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 running the spread. And he was teaching me that. But what I thought unique about Phil was he he had kind of a, a switch per se to where you know he could coach you really hard on the field without demeaning you, but to, but but put such a demand on you on the field where you just did not want to let that guy down. But off the field, his character was so high. He's such a man of integrity that you you just you wanted to run through a brick wall and like I would have done anything to to please him like I would I it like when I threw an interception or I fumbled or something man I would I would absolutely just be distraught not because I'm mad at him because I screwed up but I'm mad because I let him down I mean that that's how much that guy meant to me but you know he he took me over um you know to his house he would let me no, number one he would let me come up on Sundays which I thought was so cool mm -hmm. and get the game plan with him and I was I'm a high school quarterback man getting to see that behind the scenes was maybe the coolest thing of my life. And I think that really enticed me into the coaching world because I got to see how they game plan. They watch film together. He let me in at all the meetings. And that's something that I, I, I've i kind of done with our guys too. Like, you know, if the quarterback wants to come up during our game plan stuff, why, why should we turn him away? Like, he's the quarterback. Like, you know, this guy probably needs to know what we're doing just as much as the coaches do. And um, I thought that was really cool. And then, you know, he invited me over to his house. And, and I thought it was, you know, multiple times, I thought he was doing it to kind of show me, talk to me about ball and stuff. And he talked about, ball for 10 minutes but then other than that man we're we're hanging out with his kids and i'm seeing how he interacts with his wife and i'm seeing the way he treats his wife and his kid and for a kid that i grew up in a single parent home and i never you know really saw that interaction of 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 what that looks like you know he 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 really you know exemplified to me what it looks like to be a leader on and off the field be a you could be a good ball coach a hard ball coach but you, you know what you you could be a man of christ and a man of integrity and i i thought those were things that um, they, they, they impact me to this day. And that's why to this day, even about the UTEP job, like I called him, that's who I called, uh, you know, any job I take or any life thing going on, you know, during our championship run at Austin P last year, we, we, now that he's retired, we would talk every week and I would be like, Hey, how did you handle this? How did, how did, you know, I'm going, here's what, here's what's happening with us. We're going through this. And man, he would shoot back and just, you know, inspire me and help me like kind of uh, understand situations. And so uh, I, I can't speak enough of how impactful Phil has been on my life. I know you've been really busy, obviously new job, transfer portal, signing day, uh, new baby. Have you seen that the rock is back in wrestling and uh, who, who is your, kind of your favorites growing up? So I did see the rocks back in wrestling. I've been keeping up with that big time. And by the way, it was Sting's last match. I don't know if you saw that on, mm -hmm. on Sunday yeah. or not, Mike, but Sting's last match, he had his two sons come out for the entry. It was that was pretty, that was pretty sick, man. That was, that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. The rocks back. They were rumoring like maybe stone cold's coming to wrestle him at WrestleMania or something like that would be just off the chain if that happened. But you know, I, I like what they're doing with Roman Reigns and, and the rock and they're trying to, you know, and I, and I don't really watch it much anymore, but I can keep up with it on social media. Now I'll be scrolling through and that's kind of how I get my, I follow all these. I'm a nerd, man. I follow like wrestle ops, 1990s WWE. I follow all these like yeah. accounts that just update constantly. So I can, I can kind of keep up with it on my own time. Um, but I love what they're doing with the right now growing up. I mean, my number one all time is the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, man. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll like his charisma, the, the, the sweet shit music. I love finishing moves and come out of nowhere. And that joker, like that stuff, that's the, that thing come out of nowhere, man. But uh, just some of my all time favorites, obviously uh, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, Undertaker, you know, so, so cool. He used to be a basketball player, at Texas Wesleyan, and uh, Undertaker, uh, big big time fan. Uh, one 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 of the best wrestlers I think of all time 
like maybe the best in ring just execution in my opinion is Brett the Hitman Hart. Like that 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 Joker is flawless in the ring, man. He was he was really really fun to watch too. So uh, Triple H, uh, I mean just just you know his intensity and and stuff. But uh, yeah, the list goes on, man. Mike, we that'd be a whole other podcast for you and me, brother. <laughs> for sure. Right. So now I see where all the stage presence comes from because we were watching you at the UTEP yeah. basketball game. Full chest painted, jumping up on the scorer's table. Coach, how long did it take to get that paint off after the game? Dude, I'll tell you this. So Je- I give a shout out to our associate AD, Jeff Darby. Jeff Darby or- orders this paint on Amazon. I tell him we're doing this. I'm like, man, I want to do this. All right. He orders the paint on Amazon. All right. We get the paint. He brings in like a legit artist, guys. Like, I thought I was going to get blue and orange on me or something. He brings in like a legit artist. Took maybe like two hours to put that thing on. I mean, the pickaxe was flawless. I mean, it was really impressive, like the detail um, that was done by the artist. And then, you know, the uh, the paint actually, as soon as I got in the shower that night, wipe clean, dog. Like it was, okay. it was like, yeah, I don't. He 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 did a great job, like buying the rice. I was like, man, this is gonna take forever to get off, but uh, it wiped off that night. But yeah, I um, I was trying to get the basketball team riled up, trying to get the energy going at UTEP. That was a big conference game for us. Um, but at the end of the day, too, man, just just trying to show people like. You know, like the, the energy that's out here out west, man, is a phenomenal city, phenomenal school. There's so many great people that have great energy, great passion about uh, about El Paso, about about UTEP, and there's so much tradition here that I I just I just want to get the word out. Now, did, did I want to put my dad bot on display for the nation? No, <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know that Barstool was gonna put my dad dad bot on. You know every you know whatever, but my, I come home and my wife's looking at me, just shaking her head like really. Like, <laughs> This is what we're doing, you know, but uh, I thought maybe get around to the TV stations here, but um, nowadays everything goes viral. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, but it was, you know, the coolest part about that was, you know, getting to be in the student section after I did it and just hanging out with the students in there. And like, they got into it, man. Like they, 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 they got into that game. And uh, I even have a, 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 the hard hat I was wearing. Uh, it was one of the, uh, the fraternities that gave me a, a hard hat and I have it in my office now. So it was cool to make those relations and, just tell them, hey, come to the Sun Bowl this fall. We need to see you there. Uh, you and I share a love of more than just professional le- wrestling. I love West Texas. El Paso is my favorite big city in the state. I said on Twitter today that Alpine is where I live if everything else was equal. Yes. You went to Sol Ross. You now coach at El Paso. Can you explain to people what makes that area of the state so special? Man, I was actually, Mike, I was going to bring that up. I saw your tweet today where you put Alpine number one, and I was, I'm right there with you, man. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, if the closest Walmart wasn't two hours away, you know, I'd I'd be able to talk my wife into living there. You know, who knows? Yeah. But um, I, you know what? No, I, I just think I love number one. When I think of West Texas, I just think of like blue collar, roll your sleeves up type people. Hey, you know what? We gotta we gotta earn everything we get. We get we gotta work really really hard. Um, and the people are just so down to earth because I think they know how to make an honest living. You know, I just feel like they know what it takes to, you know, obviously everybody knows about the oil fields and people get in the oil fields and, and roll their sleeves up working. But when you recruit a West Texas kid, those are tough kids, man. I mean, they are tough minded kids, you know, yes. Are there, there are there things out here a hundred percent, but you know, some of these towns out here, like Alpine, for instance, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot there, man. So like, you know, you, they, they you have to come up with genuine ways to, you know, have fun to, um, you know, to, to, to occupy your time. What are you going to do with that? And so people work really hard out here, but I, I love the culture and the people and the, just the down to earthness of everybody in, in this part of the country. Like I, for some reason, it's funny, man. Like I always told my wife, like when we were in, in Tennessee, we we're in, in Hattiesburg, I was like, I don't know what it is, baby, but like for some reason, like I, I want to coach out West, like one, one day. And I don't know where that was, whether it's Colorado or Arizona or, you know, West Texas, but n- nothing better than, than being in West Texas in your home state. Um, and, and I'll tell you this, and Mike, you know this, when, you know, we, we just signed the number one recruiting class in, in Conference USA. And I'm telling you, because the, the word is getting out about what's here. The kids come on the visit and like, I can't tell you how many kids have been like, coach, like, I, I thought there was going to be horses, tumbleweeds, <laughs> stables, uh, saloons, and that's all you guys had out here. And I'm like, no, dude, there's actually... There's actually legit things in El Paso, man. There's over 2 million people. You include Juarez and, and there's no, there's no NFL team. We're, we're the NFL team. And there's, you, you, I mean, you throw, you throw a stone, you're going to find the best Mexican food of your life here. All right. No matter where you go. Um, and, and so it's just one of those things, man. I love the people. I love the, the culture. And I, I just love the, I love the, 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 the family atmosphere and how hardworking people are out here, man. It's, it's really the people to me is what makes it special. 
And I love the mountains and the, and the, and the sunsets here, brother, you ain't going to be, man. It's unbelievable. That's right. That's right. Unreal. Coach 34 years old, but you said before you're 57 in, in coaching years, because you started as an offensive coordinator at Solar Ross State when you were 22 years old. Can you describe that first team meeting that you had when the players are basically older than you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I and I do feel in my 50s, 60s and coach years, because I my whole career, man, I've just been I've been thrown in the fire and I'm very thankful for that. I'm very blessed. Um, you know, I I've been just kind of, hey man, thrust into a leadership role. And and my whole career has been about like, you know, taking things and, and having to adapt and learn. And and those those moments, I'll tell you this, man, like, um, you know, Carter are, are have been really, they've been scary, man. Like, you know, like when you get thrown in, you're 22 and you're an OC, like, I mean, I remember going in that first game, we played Western New Mexico, uh, there are Soul Ross, they came to our place. And I remember just like, man, I, I hope this stuff works. Like I, I told the staff on the headset, like we're, we're about to go out for the first round. I'm like, man, boys, I, I hope this stuff works. Cause I don't know. I mean, it's my first time coaching. Uh, and I was scared to death. Um, and then I got my head coaching job at East Texas Baptist. I was 26 scared to death, man. I, I learned a whole new just world of what it means to be a head coach, which is you know, no one knows what that's like until you're in the chair. I mean, it's just conversations, meetings, things that you don't deal with as an assistant. Right. Um, but I, but I can tell you this, I, I, it's a great question, Carter, because I can vividly remember the first team meeting I had uh, there at Sol Ross. And uh, you know, I mean, I, I was, I had, I had our playbook, I mean, our playbook was like that stinking big. I felt like I had to print it out for everybody. Knowing those kids are really going to look at one page and throw it away. That's why we don't do playbooks anymore. Uh, you know, but I didn't know what I didn't know. But the, the biggest thing, and I got this from a guy named Dennis Darnell. Dennis Darnell, I'm very thankful for. He was the old line coach at Texas State uh, for Dennis Francione. And when I got my 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 the job at Sol Ross, I emailed like 500, 600 guys. I mean, I, I literally shot hundreds of emails to every coach in the country, like who, who can I meet with? Cause I need to get mentor because I've never coached before. And now I'm about to start calling plays. And uh Cliff Kingsbury and Dennis Darnell, the two guys that emailed me back. And, and, and I'm so thankful for Cliff through the years. He has been just, I mean, he is a humble, genuine person that would help anybody. It ain't just because it's me. He would help anybody. I was a D3 coach. He didn't need to. And uh man, he he he's helped me immensely through my career. Um, and then Dennis Darnell, who is just one of the best Christian human beings I've ever met. On a, on a Saturday during spring where he needs to be home with his wife, you know, he was like, Hey, we'll come up from eight to noon to San Marcos, just find a way here. And I'll meet with you. And I drove to San Marcos from Alpine. And I, and I, I met with him on Saturday morning and brother, we had a, a heck of a visit. And the biggest thing he taught me was Scotty, you're going to have to separate yourself from the players. You're you, you have played with them. You have um, you know, you, 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 you can't, you, you can't operate like you have been with them. And it was kind of, I'll tell you this, Carter, it was kind of, I was kind of lucky in the sense of like, I was always kind of a, a square, kind of a nerd. Like I was never like a, just a huge, like, oh, let's go out party guys and stuff. And I'm, I'm not saying I've never done that. I'm just saying like, you know, I've never, it wasn't like, oh man, you know, Walden's throwing it down at his house this weekend. Like, you know, it wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't one of those guys, you know, I was, I was, one, I was one of the, the guys that, Hey, are we staying after practice and throwing? Like, where are you guys going? You know, they, they used to get mad at me because I'm always trying to throw and catch. And um, so it, I kind of was in a coach, maybe viewed as a coach already, maybe on the field. So that transition wasn't as hard, but still my start next receiver was, was 25. My Z was 26, you know, <laughs> D3, you can really be any age. You got eligibility. My running back was 24. I mean, I was, I was 22, you know, I, I was younger than, than, than half the guys I was coaching. I remember that team meeting. I said, guys, let me tell more than any of this X and no stuff. Let me tell you something. We got to draw the line in the sand right now. Okay. All you guys have told me that you want to be, you're tired of losing. You're tired of you're tired of getting beat down. If if you don't don't see me as a coach and you don't believe and buy into what we're doing, and and you you you, you know we go about this thing and you and you talk to me like I'm a player still. We go about that. I'm just going to be very clear. If, if that if that doesn't happen, uh, then we're we're going to fail. We're going to be right back where we were. So I I just I put it on them. I was like, who wants to win in here? And they all raised their hand. I was like, all right, well let me coach you. Let me coach you and let's work together on this. But I got, I'm, I'm not your buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm your coach, man. And I'm going to push you. And I think setting that tone early, drawing that line in the sand was the best thing I ever did. Cause we had, we had no mis misconceptions of it during the season. It was, it was, that was one of the best groups I've ever coached. And it was a really unique relationship because I literally was in the huddle with them the year before they knew my heart. They knew, they knew, they knew I wanted to win as bad as they wanted to win. I wanted it for them. And also I think we we were, I, I'm, I'm a very, you know, player driven coach. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to get feedback from my guys. 
And, you know, they knew they could talk to me in a way, you know, that, that was respectful yet. Hey coach, like, what do you think about this? And we would, we would, you know, uh, you know, toss some things around and be able to do things that met what they felt like they could be elite at. And so I just think having that relationship was huge, but that first team meeting was the, I remember to this day, I even think I have the copy of it in my office, like in my home office of, of what I went over. And uh, it was, it was a really, really cool experience, but you had to draw that line in the sand. Before we let you out of here, you know, we always hear about why UTEP can't be a contender and uh, the stuff that holds the the program back. I want to hear from you of why UTEP can be a contender and what the plan is to kind of get the minors to compete for conference championships and beyond. Yeah, Mike, that's a great question because I I'll tell you this, I'm I'm tired of hearing about all the all the quote unquote negatives of this job. I see articles written about like, you know, oh they they don't have their own football facility. Yeah, yeah, we do. We got we got we got co- we got coaches like the and the way it's written is like, you know, it makes it sound we don't have coaches offices or we don't have that. Man, we got phenomenal. We got a coaches facility right here. We got a we got a nutrition room. We got a weight room. Uh, we have a training room. And do, do we share that with other sports sometimes? Yeah, but like, tell me a, a G five program that doesn't do that, right? Uh, people people talk about in the articles. Well, they, and they don't have an indoor facility. You know why we don't have an indoor facility? Because there's no need for it. It's a waste of money. There's 320 days of sunshine a year here. We don't need an indoor facility. Like, there's no bad weather here. Like, I don't like that. That's hilarious. I see these articles written. I'm like, it's like blasphemous to me. But like, you know, I, I'm I'm with you, Mike. I'm tired of hearing about why not. And and that's why our staff we've been huge on. Let's talk about the why. Let's talk about how amazing the people are here at El Paso. Let's talk about averaging 20,000 fans a game last year when they had a struggling season, right? These people here in El Paso are hungry. They are looking for something to believe in. And this place has ha- has tradition. This place has, I mean, you look at, I mean, I, I've talked to some recruits and I've asked them, hey, do you know who Aaron Jones is? And they're like, yeah, of course I know Aaron Jones. Like, you know where he went to college, right? And and I, I'll tell you this, about 60% of them are like, no, nah, where'd he go? You tell, come on, dog. Like, you know, Will Hernandez, have you heard of Will Hernandez? Have you heard of Trevor Vitito? Have you heard of Jordan Palmer? Have you, let me, let me talk to you about these guys. We just got to do a great job, Mike, of getting out on social media, getting out by word of mouth, what we have to offer and what this place is. Like, like, I just feel like it's been so undersold. I think it's one of the, like we, I firmly believe this. This is the best kept secret in the state of Texas. I truly believe that this is the best kept secret in the state of Texas. And we have to do a good job of getting the word out. We have, we have, like people say we don't have any money. Like, dude, like, dude financially, like we, I'm, I'm able to pay my staff. Great. I, I mean, you, you compare it to conference USA, you compare, we, 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 we are budgeted fine. We, we have support from the university. This place wants to win. Uh, we have a stadium that holds over 50,000 people. There's been 10 plus seasons in UTEP history. They've averaged over 40,000 fans a game. Okay. 40,000 fans a game. Like, you know, I coached at Southern Miss, which is a phenomenal traditional power, and we struggle to get 20 in the stadium a game. Like, I'm just telling you, this place will uh, – we start winning games and doing things right, playing an exciting brand of football. There, there'll be 30,000, 40,000 people in this place every single weekend and because the hunger and, – and everywhere you go in this town, if you wear this logo, people are going to stop you, take a picture with you. They're going to throw the picks up. They're going to, they're going to like, I just got done before I met with you guys. We do community service on Thursdays. We were serving food downtown uh, at, a, at a food bank and our players are out there uh, doing it for the community. And every like cars are driving by go miners, go miners. Hey, big up. they're, I mean, this place is, but this is the most passionate place in the country. So like people say, you know, why, why you can't, I say, why not, man? Why, why not this place? Uh, we have phenomenal facilities. We're breaking ground on a brand new $5 million locker room downstairs. We'll be done in July or, or August this year. Uh, we've got an NIL collective deal we're about to roll out. Like, I mean, the, and, the, and the donor support, the alumni support is phenomenal. And, and I'm, people are just hungry for a winner, man. Um, and I, I hear people talk about the border. Right. They talk about the board. This is one of the top five safest cities in the country, guys. Like there is a the, the border patrol is real. Fort Bliss, a military town. It's real, brother. Like there ain't stuff popping off like what people think. OK, like uh, and, and people come out here and parents always ask that question. And, and we, we show them exactly, you know, why they should feel safe with their son uh, coming to school here. But uh, we, we have two malls here. We got an outlet mall. We got great places to eat. We got right around this corner. We got top golf. We got an indoor skydiving, which. Who wants to do that? But whatever, you got indoor skydiving, right? You know, cool, <laughs> great. You know, I mean, what, what's there not to love? We got the Chihuahuas that play downtown in minor league baseball in the summers you can watch. I mean, you got the locomotives, the soccer, minor league soccer team. Like, I mean, for God's sakes, Carrie Underwood's playing here uh, April 20th. Carrie freaking Underwood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 
do I like I I I, I could go on for another hour, man. You know what I mean? But you know, that's that's just a piece of we got monster trucks. I'm about to take my son to this weekend. <laughs> my monster truck right into some ball. Like, you know, get all the thing we're missing, Mike, is we're missing maybe a maybe a WWE wrestling event here. Maybe man, we gotta get that going. We get that we'll figure that out. I mean, you were going. We'll figure that out. We'll figure that yeah. out. Well, I'm fine. Coach, we, yeah. Wow. You got us signed up. We're there for you. So, uh, <laughs> love it. All right, coach. We really appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully, you're able to take a nap. I don't know if those are allowed uh, in the Walton household right now, but uh, good luck right. in spring practice, and we'll check with you pretty soon.